Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor, Sony Alpha Ambassador, and in this series of short video tutorials, we're going to deep dive into Sony's new menus that we see on cameras such as the A7 IV and the Alpha One. So without much further ado, let's get started. The Sony Alpha cameras have a zebra feature. Now this zebra setting is basically an aid to achieving appropriate exposure because it allows us to monitor the highlight values when we're capturing images and movies. So let's go into the red shooting menu, that's page 10. Before I go into the zebra settings, I want to go into this live view display settings just to explain that on a mirrorless camera we have a live view display with an setting effect on by default. This allows us to visualize the exposure in the viewfinder and on the monitor without having to view the image after we've captured it, as is the case with DSLRs. So basically if we see that an image is too bright, it will look too bright in the finder or on the monitor. So this will allow us to move the exposure using the exposure compensation dial. Now the exposure compensation dial allows us to raise or lower the uh, uh, um, exposure as appropriate. So we can use a couple of extra features to guide us when we're moving that exposure compensation. Now the basic goal of exposure is to get all of the information, the darkest shadows and the brightest highlights between the goalposts. Most importantly we want to ensure that our highlights do not overexpose because we won't be able to recover those highlight values in post-production if they've just been exposed too brightly in the camera. Now we do have a histogram on the Sony Alpha cameras that allows us to assess where the highlight values are. But these histograms are basically um, showing you the histogram for the JPEG and the movies. It's not actually showing you um, a realistic or um, accurate view of the histogram for raw files that we might be capturing. And that is the case also when we uh, click that display button a couple of times and monitor that more in-depth histogram as broken down into the individual color values there. So this is where the zebra display really comes into its own, i.e. we can get a more accurate view of what the highlights are doing rather than just looking at the histogram, especially if we're a raw shooter. So let's go into the um, exposure color tab and we'll go down to page 7 on this Alpha 7 IV camera zebra display. Now the zebra display will be off by default so we need to enable it switch it on and I would leave this on all of the time when I'm shooting movies and stills the zebra level at the moment is set too low it's just set for 70% brightness value now this might be a useful value if we're wanting to have the zebras and you can see those diagonal lines which are the zebras and it's showing us the highlight values are at 70% brightness. Now this is useful for some videographers as confirmation that the highlights are not overexposed but exactly where they need to be. Now as a JPEG shooter or a RAW shooter we might want to set that a lot higher so we're not constantly looking at zebras um, populating our finder and monitor view. So for a JPEG user you would typically want to set that to a hundred plus i.e. you're only being warned of overexposure uh, when those highlights are too bright. So in this instance for instance you're looking at the highlight values with the zebra showing you the those very bright values on the white helmet and the white uh, clothing are too bright. This would uh, lead us to uh, um, uh, moving that exposure dial down to a negative value so we have rich detail in those bright highlights. Now if we're um, modifying this for raw shooters you want to come into either the C1 or C2 options. This is where we can create a custom zebra level. First we'll come over to the right to standard range and we'll set that to lower limit. Okay, then we'll come over to the amount and we'll set that right to the maximum value 109 plus. The dynamic range in the raw file format is so big on these full frame sensors that we can go right up to 109 plus and so long as we don't see zebras then is 
the highlights will be recoverable even if the um, JPEG preview shows us that the highlights are too bright we'll still be able to uh, put uh, rich detail into those highlights if we are a raw shooter so to give you an example I've raised the exposure uh, compensation because typically with um, uh, a subject that has dominant light tones there is a risk of underexposing so with these white pelicans I'm raising to plus one exposure now there's no zebras appearing so I know the brightest highlights I still have rich detail if however I push the exposure compensation to plus two and then the zebras appear I know I've raised the exposure too far Okay, so that um, RAW, just a recap, is lower limit 109 plus for RAW shooters. Okay, you might see the uh, histogram also starts climbing up the right side of the wall. But as I said, the, um, the 109 plus is going to give you a more accurate um, feedback as to whether those highlights are too bright or not as a RAW shooter. The basic rules for exposure is go as bright as you can go before you see the zebras. So it's exposing for the highlights. Now the shadows may look too dark, but we can always raise those in post-production. So we expose for the highlights and process for the shadows. So this um, face of this portrait might look a little bit too dark, but I'm protecting the brighter highlights in the background. So I'm exposing for the highlights and then lifting the brightness of the shadows in post-production. Again, with the white wing of this uh, raptor, I don't want to overexpose those feathers. So the bird at the moment looks a little bit too dark in the capture because I'm exposing for the highlights and then processing for the shadows. Now, when you're looking for exposure compensation, uh, the, 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 the risk that you face when um, highlights will be exposed too brightly is with uh, subjects with the dominant tones being darker than average because the camera will think that the image is too dark and try and erase the exposure and then you're at risk of overexposing the highlights so with scenes with the dominant dark tones you ideally want to lower the exposure compensation to maybe minus one or even further but again you'll be guided by the zebras on the brightest tones such as the beak and the brightest feathers on the back of this um, this bird here Again, we have another scene with dominant dark tones. Again, we will probably want to lower the exposure so we don't uh, lose some of the brightest values in this scene. Again, scene with dominant light tones, we'll want to raise the exposure. This is uh, often where we have um, subjects with a bright background, such as the sky or these distant hills. We'll often want to raise the exposure compensation dial. And again, the same here. One of the other areas where I use zebras to help um, get the appropriate exposure is also in manual exposure mode. Now I will often uh, switch from automatic exposure uh, when shooting action and birds in flight to manual exposure when the background behind the bird is constantly changing from maybe a bright sky to dark trees in the background. So first of all I will point the camera at something with bright tones. Maybe it's the white cloud and then I'll get the maximum uh, brightness on the exposure until I see those zebras and those will be my optimum manual exposure settings so when the um, um, bird is flying against the sky I won't have that overexposure that we're looking at here basically I'll have set the uh, maximum exposure possible before those bright white clouds in the background start clipping or overexposing if you found this information useful, head over to patreon.com forward slash Mark Gaylor. I'm offering an Alpha Creative Skills support channel where you can download a 500 page camera specific ebook and I've covered most of the late model Alpha cameras. You'll also be able to download a cam set file if you own one of the later model Alphas. You'll be able to set up your entire camera with just a single file copied to a memory card.
I also offer additional uh, ebooks for people to download to help them master the uh, skills of creative photography and also a range of uh, one hour seminars that look at the uh, using the, uh, the camera gear to the best effect and also to build up your skills of photography in general. So head over to patreon.com forward slash Mark Gaylor.